Sudak 2020 at our Menorum Gold Core Shack. And I'm very happy to have with us uh, director and co-founder, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Peter McGaugh. Thanks, Peter, for being on the segment again. Always a pleasure, Sonny. Same place last year, but different location, I guess, right? We have our all our beautiful core displayed at the core shack. Yeah, well, you know, after all this drilling, we should have some yeah. good core to talk about. Well, we've been very busy. I mean, yeah. so let's laugh, let's uh, kind of uh, go from what we what we were uh, at last year. We. We're in the, in the middle of doing our phase one drilling. We we're about to complete it. Mm -hmm. uh, finally completed in December. And we did 18,000, 810 meters, 40 holes. Uh, what did we accomplish in that phase one of drilling? Finally, well, that it's over. Well, what we set out to do with phase one was to wrap our arms around the Alamos district as a whole. When we started, all we knew about was these veins. And then we started to find some others in outcrop we recognized they were exposed to the shallower level. We began to drill. We kept exploring. We got to the point where we had 26 veins that we had recognized as opposed to the three that we started with. Right, yeah. uh, we got holes into 19 of them. We got good results in 14 of those. So we got ourselves where we wanted to be. We understand at least the width and extent of the system. It may be larger than this. We have more ground to explore, but we've taken this from a very narrow focus to a district scale. And you, you have to remember that even the narrow focus produced 200 million ounces of high grade silver, right, yeah. which is significant. So there should be a lot more there. We got the results from the first round of drilling we were expected. You remember when we were talking two years ago, yeah. I was telling you 20 centimeters of 200 grams exactly. was, was gonna be, that threshold. was my threshold. Yeah. Uh, we've left that in the dust in 14 of the holes. So. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely where we want to be now. We are prioritizing the targets for follow-up drilling in phase two, and so we're going to go after them with a dedicated rig, at least to start with, on each of three different veins, right. and we'll keep drilling until we get the things fleshed out, find out where the ore chutes are, and, and are in the position to start drilling a resource. And the phase one drilling was primarily focused on the northeastern part of our concession base, which is the 37,317 hectare land package. Primarily, all the drilling we've kind of focused on is the 5,000 hectare concession, where the footprint grew from 200 meters uh, by a couple of kilometers or so to now what is now uh, 11 by six kilometer footprint. Yeah. A lot of work. It's, we've kind of proven the model. Um, and with all the vein structure. So w one thing that you actually mentioned on the webcast that we had recently was, was quite interesting. It's, it, you know, it's a typical epithermal vein system, but we get that. Uh, but you mentioned that there's a lot of copper content. That's w quite consistent. Which so is actually not typical of an epithermal exactly. vein system. Yeah. And these veins appear to be copper rich from the top to the bottom. And we're talking anywhere from half a percent to five, six percent copper in some places. Uh, which are very, very high grades, atypical of, of epithermal veins. I mean, that doesn't mean these didn't form by a similar typical epithermal process, but there's something else going on here. And we know that immediately to the north is the Piedras Verdes porphyry copper system. It's probably older than our mineralization, but it may be telling us that there's the, the hydrothermal fluid circulated through these rocks and picked up extra copper yep. to sort of juice up and, and enrich yep. the veins that we're working with here. And you know, a couple of percent of copper goes a long way to paying your fixed costs oh, absolutely. Uh, and your yeah, operating yeah. costs. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very nice sweetener. It does complicate things a little bit in terms of understanding the vein zoning, uh, but it's, it's a Hollywood problem. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see all the vein systems there in detail right behind you. I mean, you're seeing the main vein zone, the Promontorio, which is historically mined, uh, La Quintera, uh, La Quintera, and the Minas Nuevas. Minas Nuevas up here, but all of these veins but that, this is pretty much all that, that we just started to drill. I mean, for most of these holes, most of these veins, even if they've got three or four kilometers of strike length, we only have two or three holes in them. Right. And we know, especially based on this trove of, of historic data, that we acquired recently, uh, we have a much better idea of what the geometry of the individual ore shoots are that were mined historically. And that gives us a bit of a template to use for, first of all, what the structural controls are, why the shoots are where they are, and then how big they should be. Right. So how does that relate now with all the drilling that we've done 
you know, um, we acquired quite a bit of historical data. Just touch on a few points in terms of the historical data, its relation to our drilling, and how does that kind of uh, uh, create our strategy going forward? Or well, the two? historical data were really important for a combination of reasons. I mean, first of all, we've been looking for historic data for the district for quite some time, and yep. have been a bit surprised by how little we seem to be able to ha find. Right. The fact that someone comes up with a box of stuff out of their basement or back room and gives it to Steve yes. um, tells us that there could be more. Right. But at least it gives us good information on two of the three big historic mines. And so we have level maps now. We understand that they mined from the surface to 400 meters depth. We understand that some of the ore chutes were as much as 40 meters wide. Right. We understand that the chutes were 350 to 400 meters long right. on plan. So we now have an idea what size targets we should be looking for, and we can dig into those data and determine what kind of structural inflections correlate with those chutes and use that for information for determining where we drill along these structures. I mean, if you think about a 350 meter ore chute, yes. and you've got three kilometers of strike lane, right. you know, you could have a half a dozen of them in there, and you need to drill in the right place right. to find. But we're still at early stages, but I think this is reinforcing our understanding of the district as a district scale play. Right. That when we dig into these historic data, we can tell that there are multiple stages of mineralization. And there's exactly. some that have, there's some of the veins that have more gold than others. There's some that have more lead zinc than others. There, there's the, the silver content varies. And we can see, in addition to what we are already seeing in our drill holes, that this is a long lived system that had a number of pulses of fluid injected right. into it, and on a district scale, that's what you want to see. Yeah. I mean, our, our basic thesis is that 200 million ounces of historic production from three veins right. is simply telling you that there's a lot more yeah. there, and this is, this is proving it, and these historic data confirm a lot of what little historic data we had in terms of average grade total production, geometry and g dimensions of the ore chutes. Right. And it also shows us that there's a bunch of old drill holes that were put in in the 70s and 80s from underground in some of these mines that went, in some cases, several hundred meters below and adjacent to the old workings, right. and they were still in mineralization. Right. And that, that confirms what we thought was was true about the district that they had mined effectively to where they could no longer pump effectively with 19th century technology right yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know <laughs> with the, the system keeps going we won't necessarily try to chase those remnants of old ore shoots we may we may shoot for some of them at even greater depth to see how far right. it goes but that lets us determine what kind of vertical extent we ought to see. A typical right. epithermal vein system will have a vertical extent of three or 400 meters. Now we're already looking at that, and then some. Because those deep mines are, are uh, basically at the bottom of the hill, so we know right. there's headroom above them. Yeah. To, to do that, you sort of have to have multiple boiling levels in the system, and the more of those you have, the more complexity so you have, bigger veins, better mineralization. And, and why is it so important? You stressed this several times on, in terms of the, in terms of the geological senses. Why is it so important to have multiple stages of mineralization, uh, multiple pulses? Like what? what yeah. So think of a vein as a bank account. Yeah. The more deposits you make in the bank account, the more you ultimately have yeah. in your bank account. Got so it. if. You know, you're saving a hundred bucks a week out of your paycheck, you know, and you do it once or twice, you've only got a couple hundred bucks. If you do it yes. in there every, every week for a year, you've got even more. And so that's all it is, is every time you have a pulse, you have new mineralization being in place in that structure, which just adds to the metal budget and adds to the volume. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, great. I mean, any, any closing thoughts on what we're planning to do? I'm really excited to see where, how things flesh out in this system. I mean, it's really exciting to take a district that had been thought of as being about this big, make it this big, and now we get to prove that 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Peter, for being... Uh, Always a pleasure, Sonny. Yeah, letting us know what's going on and providing some guidance here. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at menorum.com. And uh, we'll provide a link in the description below of our contact information. You can ask us any questions on Menorum. Thank you. Thank you.